Now you got you guys might grow at different rates, or one person might take the lead mm-hmm. at first and then potentially inspire the other, right? It's not doesn't have to be at the same pace in the same way, but both have to value looking at themselves at some point. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Thrive State Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. V, triple board certified MD and performance and longevity expert. And on today's podcast, we dive in deep into one of the bioenergetic elements, which is relationships. What does relationships have to do with your health and performance? It turns out that relationships, particularly the ones that are really close, are able to draw up all the hurt, all the trauma from our past that is not processed yet. And and that energy that we keep, um, all these traumas that we keep in our body, keep us from that vibrational state, which is thrive state. Unless we heal those traumas, we're not going to be able to tap into the vibrational state that gives our DNA the signals for optimal health, longevity, and peak performance. This is the relational and spiritual aspects of health and longevity. And I can't wait to dive into more in this podcast. If this is the first time you are joining this podcast, welcome, welcome, welcome. Really, I bring the best thought leaders, experts in the space of health, wellness, and longevity to give you the tools and tactics to take your life to the next level. So please subscribe and engage with this podcast and go to ratethispodcast.com dot com slash thrive state and give us a five star review that's going to allow more exposure to the podcast for us to continue to do what we do and serve more people doing so i also want to announce the second edition of thrive state your blueprint for optimal health longevity and peak performance is coming out on april 11th 2023 that's right it's the second edition of my book so what's new in the second edition Well, we talk about the default mode network or the ego or what stops us from optimal health, longevity, and peak performance. I also talk about how the thrive state, this energy, this vibration, this life force that we can cultivate within ourselves is actually felt by others as well. So when we work on getting into the thrive state within ourselves, we actually create an energetic field which pours into our family, our other relationships, and our businesses. That's how we go from me to we. All this and more in the second edition, so pick up a copy at thrivestatebook.com. Today, I want to introduce you to a very good friend of mine, somebody actually met doing a lot of personal development work. His name is Brian Yang. And after spending almost a lifetime in toxic relationships, including family, as an anxious, avoidant person, a pleaser, a narcissist, a savior, a victim, perhaps and more, he actually began to ask the most important question. Why am I attracting these relationships into my life? And why does it repeat? He did a lot of personal work, including ayahuasca, breath work, somatic therapy, and really started to understand the layers of conditioning and trauma and started a journey back to his heart. And one of the major catalysts he used to go back to his heart is his relationship with his partner, Donica. It's a beautiful story and a story I think so many people can relate to, particularly people who might be struggling in relationship now. When you start to realize that maybe the people that have been brought into your life or the struggles that have been brought into your life are really maybe the catalyst for your own evolution, a catalyst for your own awakening. On today's episode, we dive in deep as to how relationships could be the best mirror for ourselves to heal and to become the best versions of us. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy this enlightening conversation with my friend, Brian Yang. Brian Yang, welcome to the Thrive Day Podcast, brother. I am excited to be here and uh, thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. I mean, I, I am just so impressed with uh, your growth and everything that you're doing uh, out in the social media space, which is really providing a a space to be able to talk about uh, issues, particularly as it pertains to relationship. We're going to dive into that in a second. But Brian Yang, I want people to know a little bit more about you in a game we play on this show called The Five to Thrive. Five quick questions, game show style, to be answered in 30 seconds or less. And if you win The Five to Thrive, the next time we meet, we get a health-conscious meal on me. So the question I have to you, 
Brian Yang, are you ready to play the Five to Thrive? Team on. Let's do it. Okay. Question number one. As a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be an artist. Mm. I wanted to be Any particular art? in trucks and be an artist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Question number two. If we were in a large venue and you were given a mic to sing a song to save the life of everybody in the room, what song would you pick? Oh, it's going to be a, uh, a Bon Jovi life uh, song. Um, it's my life. Yeah, my life. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. <laughs> and, and for those that didn't know, one of the first parties, you know, that I was uh, – at as a Tony Robbins Platinum member was at Brian Yang's house and we did karaoke. That's right, we sure did, it was a good time. <laughs> it was a good time. Qu question number three is, if you were stuck in an elevator for 24 hours only, um, what one thing from the outside world would, would you wanna have with you to make your time in that elevator more enjoyable? Stuck in an elevator, what would make that enjoyable? I'm going to be with my phone, my phone. I'm just going to be cliche. It's going to be my phone. <laughs> my phone, I got access to communication with everybody. I can, you know, I can do social media. I can do all kinds of things on that. Yeah. Sounds good. Question number four, you've done obviously a lot of personal work. What would you say was your initial, you know, um, your initial taste of a big aha moment? Like life was not how I viewed it before. Was it a book? Was it a personal development course? What was it for you? Yeah, so a, um, a moment in life, which was a big aha moment. And um, I would say it, I mean, hands down, it knocks everything off the list as number to be number one. It's um, plant medicine, ayahuasca. Mm. Mm, beautiful. Knocks off me, just uh, earth shattering and made me question everything I thought was real. Oh, I can't wait to dive into that. And question number five now is how does Brian Yang want to be remembered? Yeah, how would I like to be remembered? Someone that inspired love and growth and evolution. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, man, you win the five to thrive, which means the next time I see you, a heart conscious meal on me, my friend. Uh I just want to introduce everybody to you. I met Brian Yang when I was a Tony Robbins Platinum member, and um, both of us were in the Platinum program. And for people who don't know Tony Robbins, he's you know uh, probably known as one of the most popular personal development, probably the OG personal development uh, person in the space. And so Brian and I were both sort of just on our path to do deeper work, to to uncover, to excavate ourselves, to become better versions of ourselves, and. This was what, maybe about, uh, what, three, four years ago we met? Yeah, I think it was like 20, um, 2019, 20, yeah, 20, 20, 2019, probably, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, in the past, I would say six months to a year, you have really grown a large social media following, and I've seen your content. It is right on point. It, could, it definitely shows all the deep work that you've done, and today's – conversation is really about relationships but you know in the context of why are we talking about relationships in a podcast of health performance and longevity well the, here's the following for people who watch listen to the podcast they know that really it's our vibration and the choices that we make create our vibration and that determines the messages we give to ourselves but are we aware of of the choices that we are making. Sometimes we think we want to do something, but but we make choices that are completely the opposite. And it's until we get to understand ourselves in a deeper level, can we really be awake to make choices within us. And this, the work that you do out in social media is, is, is demonstrating that people could become a little bit more aware of themselves when they are in relationship. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the reality is that relationships the ones that are the closest, most intimate. And it doesn't have to be the romantic. It can be like a close friendship, a business partner. There's anyone that's really close to you. They will, you know, be the ultimate mirrors to you. And and, and yeah. just them being themselves trigger and push your buttons and shine light on the stuff that is unresolved inside you, the stuff that you haven't fully looked at, that you haven't accepted, that you haven't healed. 
it will bring that roaring up to the surface. And, mm. you know, most people kind of go into victim mode and they just start fighting and blame each other for hurting. You know, you hurt me, you did that. You know, you're not fulfilling my needs, right? But really all they're doing is like getting you to face that wound inside, ultimately. Mm. When we can, and the beautiful thing about relationships is that when it does do this, it gives you a chance to look at that blind spot, to heal, yeah. which then as you go through the shadows of that, and, and, and take it as a gift to transform and heal. The benefit is that you become more aware, you become more conscient and conscientious of yourself, make better decisions and, you know, up level yourself to higher vibrations and so on. Right. We don't fall into the blame game and, and victimization that um, is very common and very easy to, to get into. Oh yeah. I, I, I have to say that I've been, uh, with my partner now since probably 2019. In fact, I met her <laughs> at, at the very first um, uh, plot event at Tony Robbins. And we certainly went to that that space. I think you refer to it as the cycle of doom. Yeah. Other uh, relationship coaches call it the, the power struggle in a relationship, which is basically when both wounds start coming up and you start triggering each other. But before we get into that, you know, the deeper in the science of, of that struggle, I want to know probably back in 2019, you were already married to your wife at the time. At that point, I know you guys were doing a lot of personal development work. Where were you in a relationship? And I don't recall knowing that you had a desire to help people of this capacity back then. Was this something that you grew in yourself and just, just found yourself, wow, you, you transformed so much and now you have a gift to share? Where were you when we first met in 2019 in terms of your desire to do this type of work? And where were you in your relationship at that time? That was a great question. Very juicy question. So when I was um, back then, my wife, well, my, my wife now, we were still um, boyfriend, girlfriend, not married yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've been okay. engaged, I don't think. That was like a year maybe afterwards, right? So- mm. Um, as far as I'll start with the relationship, the phase that we were in in that relationship was like deep in the relationship loop of doom. That's why I call it. Yes. Right? Yeah. Call mm -hmm. it whatever you want to call it. But basically, is that almost feels like an unending dance of like yes. you get triggered and in your trigger, you try to do things to try to soothe and get your needs met. But in doing so, the way you try to do that perfectly triggers the other person. Yeah. And then go into their behavior pattern to cope with that trigger and that behavior pattern triggers the hell out of you. So them trying to soothe and, and protect themselves or get love or whatever, that behavior, that coping behavior perfectly touches your wounds as well. And then mm. you do more yeah. stuff. And then the more that you do your stuff to try to feel safe or loved or whatever it is, that behavior perfectly triggers them. So a good yeah. example of that is like, um, if I'm feeling controlled, criticize, I'm feeling unsafe in my own space. I'm yeah. going to shut down. I'm going to shut down, get logical, intellectual, or run away. Something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Try to soothe myself, right? Yeah. That's what that's going to do to her, to, to the opposite, right? Yeah. I do that, she's going to feel more alone, more abandoned, more unheard, unseen. And then she's going to be scared and she's going to do more of her, what, the criticism, the emotional projection, the stuff that yeah. makes me feel unsafe, because that's what she thinks that she needs to do, right? So we were deep in that dance as many oh. relationships get into. And it was just long and drawn out and you know nothing was really working. We tried trying a lot of things, right? So that's the kind of where we were at. Let's start that's there honey, because I, I want to let people... Yeah, yeah. Let, 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 let me start there and jump on as well. Just to let people know just how common it is because I... You know, we could talk about these attachment styles later, but I feel like I'm an avoidant. She's an anxious. And certainly I get, you know, I get stressed out with work and, and, and potentially I'm not present. Me not being present, you know, is actually a trigger for, for her, particularly with an action attachment styles. And then she criticizes, controls, condemns, complains, you know, all the C words. And it makes me just want to shut down. I, I just want. So it's a very common thing. And we've been doing that for like three years and we're just starting to see the light. And and I just want to let people know that so many people actually leave relationships at this point because they're just blaming the other person. But there is certainly a light of the tunnel. So I just I I wanted to just let people know I went through the same thing. We're still going through the same thing, but there is a gift in it all. It isn't there. Massive gift. Yeah. That's, um, you know, we'll we can get more into that that dance and the dynamics of that, but yeah. 
absolutely this incredible, just incredible earth shaking gift. And going through that is that you get to look at those hurt parts, that wounded little child inside that's basically coming out. Mm, and yeah. learn to love that little boy inside or the little girl inside in the way that it didn't get that love from its parents, right? Mm. Doing so, you just you just grow and heal and becomes a, become a person that has a fuller person with more self love that then you can give to others, more self worth that then you can, you can create and create impact on the world. It is worth it to go to get the gift from that uh, you know relationship loop of doom. But um, one thing I want to circle back on because we can get into that again um, in a bit is um, where I was also. Uh, in that stage on, on a business level, because you mentioned that. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Doing this, right? So I was yeah. totally in like achievement mode, right? And yeah. a lot of, you can, you can, that's very prevalent in Tony Robbins, even though he tries to get people, he's trying to tease people to like your, your top value should probably be loving growth or something like that. But most people yeah. still fucking achievement, be bigger, be stronger, be more yeah. accomplished, right? Yeah. Push the goals, whatever that is. And so I was very much in that world. And, um, you know, I wanted to like, okay, I got, I got, you know, one or two million. How can I make that 10 million? Right. That's just the yeah. game. Nonstop machine. Um, yeah. Online business. I ran e-commerce, e-commerce, uh, different brands and stuff like that. And so I was entrenched in that kind of cycle. Like, you know, that's how you live a fulfilling life. You succeed, you excel. And then maybe, maybe you, 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 you give and you have service and add that sprinkle that on top of that. Yeah. <laughs> it's more yeah. like that. Right. Mm. As opposed to that's the meat, right? And so, um, yeah, that's where I was. And, and and I guess long story is short, I would say the biggest benefit of being in that Tony Robbins community, being a plat member, yeah. was being exposed to the different people and the different ideas. And in particular, the spiritual aspects. And yeah. the that was, that eventually led me down to a much deeper path of, of, of real fulfillment, which was how can I get back into my heart? How can I let go of the ego's desires of succeeding, fulfilling, and trying to prove something to somebody mm -hmm. um, and, and get into real, real service? It took a while. So, I mean, even when that spiritual journey started, yeah. that was 2021. I drank ayahuasca, January 2021. They opened the gates. It blew my mind open. And, you know, I was not spiritual before that. I was on, I was mm. not seeking I was here's the thing. I was not seeking spirituality. I did not care about it. I was almost atheist. Yeah. But I saw it as like, oh, you could like maybe heal some childhood wounds from this, you know, or you process some emotions. Cause I was dealing with that with Danica, right? My yeah. wife. Yeah. My wife now. So I'm like, all right, let's just do it. You know, we're suffering. Let's just try it. And and it just became the most profound experience of my life. And um, you know, I, became spiritual after that i realized that oh okay there there is a god maybe not in the way that religion tries to box it yeah. but there is a very intelligent force stringing this whole show to show together yeah. and and we're all part of it and we're all part of it you know uh interconnected is we're all we're interconnected with each other but also this higher power we're not separate and so you know i was still kind of doing the same patterns but slowly breaking away from it and at some point mm -hmm. You know, the universe and its magnificent plan somehow got me to crash and burn miserably and basically lose all my money. The thing oh. that I was attached to the most it was a, mm -hmm. that was tied to my self-worth, tied to my sense of freedom, tied to everything that I hold so dearly at the time as far as, far, as, far as my values were concerned. Yeah. It was ripped away. And it felt horrible. I felt completely worthless. And it was a dark night of the soul. I was going through many dark nights of the soul at the time, but this was like probably as like rock bomb as you can think of, at least for someone mm. like me. Yeah. And it was the best thing that it was necessary. It was the perfect part of my spiritual journey was to detach from that, have that ripped away from me and wake up to what's really valuable, to let go, to learn to let go of that attachment to that to my self worth to anything outside myself, really. Mm. Right? At this time, that time was the money and whatever status of being a millionaire and owning a business, whatever you know, identity that I, I made of that. And so um, then I, you know, once that was ripped away, I literally had to get a job and I got the job just to pay bills roughly. But through that, you know, I did more plant medicine. I mean, you know, the, you know, the 
I think from 2020 up, up until now, just doing plant medicines and spiritual and emotional work on top of that. Um, and at some point it clicked. It was like, you know, what? why am I waiting to serve? Why don't I just start right now? Yeah. Just stop. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been through stuff. There's something valuable in the experience that I've been through both individually and also with my wife mm-hmm. a lot. Right. We, we went through, obviously, obviously we did all the Tony Robbins stuff, but we mm-hmm. did tons and tons of other shit like therapy, shamanic healing, Reiki energy healing, uh, the, 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 I forgot what it's called. NSA, the the network spinal analysis, um, all kinds of energy stuff, trauma work, like a, just a plethora of stuff to try to figure yeah. us out. And so there's value in that, right? You know, I didn't get, get, get a certificate or a degree, but I actually went through the work of working on myself and healing my own stuff and spending, you know, crap ton of money in doing so. There's a value in that that yeah. I can share with the world. The stuff that doesn't work, the stuff that does work. And cut out all the crap, right? And so I was like, you know what? I'm just actually Jan, uh, July of last year. Uh, July, yeah, last year. I just said, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to put out videos. I'm going to start just or- organizing my thoughts and experiences and start sharing it. And and I also have a background in marketing and reverse engineering, yeah. you know, works. So there's, that, there's also that from before. But I started posting stuff. The messages were starting to hit very strongly. And then it became obvious like, wow, this the pains and struggles that I went through, everyone's yeah. going through it in some flavor, some flavor of it they're experiencing. And it's the most yeah. hardest, difficult thing that you can go through in a lifetime, but it's the most rewarding and necessary journey to, to go through to grow, to heal, to find that real love that we're all craving for, which is really re- reconnecting back to your heart. But in doing yes. so, guys. <laughs> Dip through the waters of darkness and trauma that blocks you from that, mm. right? So, yeah. So I guess long story short, that's kind of, you know, the, the journey up until now. That's beautiful. And for anyone who might be going through the shit, who might be feeling a little bit of the struggle, you know, Ram Das says that the struggle is really the sandpaper for our awakening. And my friend, uh, I, I just want to thank you. You know, I really want to thank you from my heart. I'm so grateful that you shared that story because, I mean, I, I feel like I'm having like some ego death going on me right, right now. You know, like I had a $2 million house before, convertible Porsche and whatnot. And now I've got a family of five that I've got to support. And I'm living in my parents' house that has security bars all over, piece of shit yard, and two liquor stores at the end of the block going, my God, Chien Vu. <laughs> So I feel like I'm going through that very, very same process. And just to, to know that you you may might have been a couple steps ahead in, in that process, I'm really starting to enjoy what this what, what this place is for me right now. So it, it's so beautiful for you be, to share that and let people know that that struggle, that hurt is really, truly a gift for you to rediscover you and the love that has always been there in you that has never left. Yeah, that's yeah. that's key right there. It's that love that has always been inside and never left. Always is there, always will be there, always has been there, is there right now. Um, and uh, it's just peeling off the conditioning, right? That conditioning, which is traumas, family yeah. crap, society mm-hmm. conditioning, cultural conditioning. So layers yeah. of stuff, layers and layers of blocks to that infinite source of love that's inside. Mm. It's a hero's journey. It's 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 hard, right? It's a hero's journey. It's a beautiful journey. And when I when I talk about health and longevity, you know, it really just ties back down to love. It really ties back down to this innate sense of who we are when we are born, that we have this this love vibration, and every single trauma or conditioning we have just forms a another layer of the onion, another layer of the onion, another layer of the onion. But it's this beautiful, beautiful human experience to go, oh, well, that's a layer I could peel now. That's another layer I could peel now to come back to that original vibration. And that's the, that vibration of love is also the vibration that speaks to our DNA in an epigenetic level that gives us health, longevity and performance. So it's all tied together, my friend. Yeah, a thousand percent. Yeah, And I love you talking about like vibration and energy because that's what it comes down to at the end of the day, you know. Yeah, I think when we are away from that, because it's the human conditioning, it's the trauma, the social conditioning, all these things that make us not 
the vibration that we are when we are born. We are something else. And yeah. those things are not in resonance. And yeah. when your body, you know, when your body feels, oh, I am not being the person that I am, which is already true love, that I need to be something else for love, yes. that energetic puts your body in the stress state. What happens in the stress state? As when people read my book, the inflammation goes up, your immune system goes down, that gives you chronic symptoms of chronic disease. Yes. So the path to longevity, performance, and health is really a path of rediscovering yourself and finding that true love. Yeah, I feel that in the heart. Absolutely, a thousand percent, right? And it affects all yeah. areas, like obviously performance, health, what you eat, uh, you know, how you uh, take care of yourself physically, and as yeah. well as relationships. Yeah. Like literally, it it it, it uh, permeates all areas of your life, every yeah. single area, area. As far as like, you know, are you in your heart or are you in the the separation from the heart, which is the conditioning and traumas, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then people could understand that every. Well, I wouldn't say every emotion, every chronic emotion um, that is not love is human conditioning. And if you can start to understand that, you can go, all right, well, is is there a saber tooth tiger? Am I falling somewhere? Is there true danger? Because if not, what's blocking me from the love right now? Yeah. And, and that's, that's something in here. Um, it's beautiful stuff. I, I want to get into something because I feel you explain it so well. So I just want to dive into this part. Um, there are different forms and different type of traumas that we all go through as children, you know, parents, society, TV, and things like that. However, you know, some of the, you know, some of the relationship dynamics are very well explained through attachment styles. And I think you do a very excellent job in explaining, you know, attachment styles and and what those initial core wounds are, and particularly then offer kind of what people need to work on. Um, to, to 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 get better with that. And I think that's some of the brilliant work that you're doing. So I just wanted to, to you know, in, in a short period of time we have left, is talk about those attachment styles, where those wounds are coming from, and then, you know, how people would start the healing process. Because I feel so many people aren't aware of these things, but knowing that these are just common, very, very common behaviors that we have from common traumas we all experienced during childhood, people could be like, oh, wow, this this is not just me. Uh, and that there's, there is a very beautiful path forward. So let's talk a little bit about that. This episode of the Thrive State Podcast is brought to you by the Thrive State Accelerator. The Thrive State Accelerator is actually a home course that I developed using the exact same techniques I work with my celebrity clients, CEOs, and executives on how to get them to the Thrive State. The Thrive State Accelerator teaches you how to master your seven bioenergetic elements, that sleep, nutrition, movement, stress and emotional mastery, relationships, our thoughts and mindset, as well as purpose. In this Thrive State Accelerator, you're also gonna get a bonus module on optimization. That's how I talk about supplementation, peptides, all the optimization techniques I use with my clients to get them to the Thrive State. Now, for some of you who are just joining us for the first time, you guys might be wondering, what is the Thrive State? Well, the Thrive State is actually the energy, the epigenetic environment we give to ourselves, telling ourselves, telling our DNA how to act and how to respond. And if we want optimal health, longevity, and peak performance, if we can master these seven bioenergetic elements, our ability to have those three things that we just said, optimal health, longevity, and peak performance is at its greatest. And it also prevents you from getting chronic symptoms like brain fog, being overweight, feeling sluggish, acne, pain, all these chronic symptoms, as well as preventing you from getting chronic disease. So getting to that thrive state is really getting to that state to master being that very best version of yourself so you could show up for you, for your family, for your business, everything that's important to you. So go ahead, check it out right now at kianbu.com slash accelerator and use coupon code podcast25 for 25% off. Now back to the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the 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 theory of attachment styles has been around for a long time. I'd say decades, many decades. But ultimately, like you know, how you the, the deeper details of it, what, what's how what causes it, and how to heal and get out of it. Yeah, um, I have kind of a little bit of a different take on it. So I'll first say that you know what you hear typically out there with therapy and so on, yeah. um, or modern psychology, is that 
this is your attachment style. Find someone healthy. Find someone that's secure that doesn't trigger you so you are more of a match, right? That's mm -hmm. not how it works. Um, you are going to be attracted to your counterpart that will trigger you. That's who you're attracted to. We're attracted to the person that will help us grow on a fundamental mm -hmm. spiritual energetic level. That's the way it is. It's just like a negative charge attracted to a positive charge. Mm. Someone who's avoidant attracted to someone who is anxious. Someone who is a pleaser going to be paired up perfectly with someone who's more controlling, narcissistic. This mm. dance happen over and over. Every layer of conditioning and trauma, you're going to find yourself linking up with a counterpart, right? Like, mm. a, like, a, piece of, like a puzzle piece, piece connecting to another puzzle piece or a negative and positive charge, so on and so forth. And so how you get out of that is actually, you know, actually healing yourself, actually going into your wounds that get brought up from them and facing mm. it, feeling the pain, processing it, and, and releasing the attachment to these old stories that I was not loved enough, that I need to, get, I need to like prove myself, you know, all these different things. There's a whole journey. Uh, I'm going to circle back to that in a minute. But as far as like, I mean, kind of pedaling back to the avoidant anxious dance, um, there's yeah. also what's called a, um, a disorganized attachment, which is someone that basically both, and they kind of oscillate right. between the two, depending on who they're with or the situation. Um, but we'll start with the avoidant because yep. you, know, you, we might be, you know, this might be really relevant because that's my history is being yep. an avoidant. It sounds like that was yeah. your history of being an avoidant. Absolutely. Recovering mm -hmm. avoidance right here. And so, <laughs> yeah. And so what an avoidant, what an avoidant is, is someone that is um, their primary kind of go-to overall uh, um, coping behavior is to the keyword avoid the, the challenges pain, conflict, whatever it is, right? So you can distract with work. You can um, distract with friends. You can go into addictions. There's so many ways to distract in modern society, a million ways, right? You can be addicted to working out. You can be addicted to things that seem healthy, but you're distracting yourself, right? Mm -hmm. It's getting away from the uncomfortable emotions, particularly yeah. the uncomfortable emotions from someone that's close to you. I rather, or you can also shut down. So if it's not running away or distracting, you might be just shutting down. You yeah. might just find yourself numbing out, even though, I mean, you might find this happen too. Like there might be those times where you try to listen to your partner, mm -hmm. but you might be physically present, but emotionally you're just checked out or numbed out or just completely like robot mode, but you're still trying. Yeah. Right? So that what, might happen. What, what is the initial trauma for, for, for that avoidant personality or attachment style? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the trauma that creates that is typically in the family environment, you know, you're, you're just basically not, you do, there's a feeling of not feeling safe, not feeling safe to express your emotions or even just even the neglect of not having someone even check in and care about your emotions. And so you're just conditioned that, oh, with emotions, I just, I can't, I can't express it to get it, get my needs met. I, I can't even um, feel safe to be in proximity with people and so you just shut down, right? You learn to shut down at a very early age to shut down. You learn to soothe yourself actually, right? By shutting down. Exactly. It's right? a soothing, right? Because right? you can't deal with it. So well, I yeah. can't deal with this uncomfortable, uncomfortable yeah. emotion. I got to shut down or distract. Get really good at distracting or just being not present. Yeah. Right. So you can, you know, for me, it's being like forgetful. So not being super present, forgetful is one way of checking out, right? Not yeah. intentionally. It's happening on autopilot. And yeah. And also having parents that were controlling potentially, right? So mm -hmm. one or both parents might have been really controlling and suffocating. That is one of the wounds of someone that's avoidant is that control. Ooh, right? sounds yeah. like you and I share the same mother. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a very familiar mother, right? <laughs> and, and the mother might be a little bit narcissistic potentially as well, right? Mm -hmm. Not all the time, not all the time, but especially the narcissistic. You know that that's that that comes hand in hand with being very controlling and domineering and not giving yeah. you the space to be yourself and express mm. yourself right so mm. there's pain against that so mm. when we up into that familiar energy again if we feel like a small little boy again yeah we've controlled and suffocated and small like our voice doesn't matter our needs doesn't matter our needs don't matter and we go into shutting down or trying to run away from it right oh so good yeah, yeah. This is really good. I'm, I'm sure so many people will resonate with, you know, with uh, in, in the, these situations just from their past. So, so that's great. That, that's the avoidant. What about the anxious? Yeah. So the anxious is um, is going to be a bit different. There might be some overlap. A lot of these wounds do have some overlap to them. 
they've been anxious. It's like the, the, their parents were very neglectful and the, yeah. they needed them. They were just not present. Either they were they're, they were checked out or yeah, yeah. or when they, they're, they're asking for love and affection or something, whatever that they're trying to express, they get met with maybe perhaps um, uh, potentially aggressive invalidation, right? Like, oh, you yeah. know, you shouldn't feel yeah. that way. Right. Yeah, and that yeah. creates that trap, that trap energy, like, oh, I of, of that pain of not feeling heard, not feeling seen, not feeling validated. Right. And they carry that forward. Mm, yeah. Huge um, abandonment wound for the for the anxious. Yeah. And it's, and then ultimately it's feeling completely abandoned and alone. Yeah, yeah. Feeling that a lot as a child. Right. Mm -hmm. Parents that just weren't there for them. Or maybe they experienced abuse from one parent, but the other parent wasn't there to protect them. Right. And so they have all this resentment towards this other parent that wasn't there to protect them or somebody there to be protect them. And so they have this wound around feeling unprotected, unsupported, alone, and so on, right? And then carrying that forward, then they become very anxious and trying to compensate for that by getting yeah. controlling or critical to force attention back onto you. The reason why they get critical, um, which you know, not all the time, but you know, this is very typical of anxious attachment. That projection of emotion and criticism, it, criticism isn't actually about trying to hurt you. It feels like that when we're receiving it yeah. as someone that's more an avoidant that has wounds around that, we're, we're translating that as you're being a mean bitch or something, right? You're being right. a mean, fill in the blank, you know, right. you're hurting me, right? It's not actually not what's happening within their internal world. In their internal world, they are scared. They're yeah. being super alone, abandoned, and they're just, they're just clinging for dear life. Please love me. Please see me, right? Obviously, it is not coming off that way. They're, they're criticizing. They're poking at you. They're pushing your buttons yeah. to force an emotional reaction out of you onto them. Even if it's negative attention, it's right. better than no it attention. It still gets love. Exactly, yeah. right? Some attention, no matter how negative it is, is better than no attention. And no, no attention is abandonment, which feels like death. Mm. So that's yeah. the trick there, right? That's why their, 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 their emotional impulse is so in, in, incredibly intense at times and very can be perceived as very needy because there's a fear of abandonment and death associated with it if you were to really touch that wound because ultimately if you are a child and you are abandoned you will die right you're completely <laughs> helpless and at the mercy of your parents and so this there is a um operating system super ingrained into every child to be in connection with the parents yeah for survival right Survival is directly dependent on the parents. So it needs a parent's approval. It needs, it needs their presence. It needs their love. It needs them in all the different needs, right? We need to feel seen by them. We need to feel heard and, and, and validated that they, they, they see worth in us so that we're in their good graces to continue to be in safety and survival, ultimately. But mm. very often, parents having their own traumas, having their own baggage and just being human and making mistakes, there's yeah. going to be a disconnect between what you needed as a child versus what the parents were capable of giving. There's going to be some kind of gap. And that gap turns into the emotional wound that gets replayed later on in life. A mm. couple of questions I want to dive into here. I mean, both of us are male avoidant. Both of our partners are female anxious. Do you find this to be more of a prevalent pattern, just how parents usually treat their son or daughters? Or, or did, was this completely random? I'd say it's more prevalent. Um, for men to be avoidant and women to be anxious. Um, I've seen that in terms of my own learning, but also in working with clients, it's the same pattern of what I'm learning as well. It's, it's confirming that, that men yeah. tend to be more avoidant and women tend to be more anxious and emotional and, 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 and needy and clingy, you know, quote unquote. And what um, I love that you shared earlier that I want people to just hear and listen, because you might, be talking to your friends about your partner who might be a particular way and your friends are like, oh no screw that behavior you need somebody who's secure and that's probably what your friends might tell you or what maybe some yeah. some therapist might say this person might be better for you what i love that you share uh which is what i'm resonating with and what what i'm going through in my own relationship as well is the person that is triggering you most is, is that gift for you to do that work, to be able to see um, all the stuff that's within you. Yes. And if you guys could somehow see the innocence of the child of the other person, 
if you could start to see the love in them and and, 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 and in you again, you could see that they are the per perfect person to go through this phase to more spiritual enlightenment and bliss. I oh, yeah. love that you said that, Brian. Yeah, thank you. Because it's the, it's the ultimate truth. It's, it's much deeper than trying to cope and manage your triggers and wounds. Right? You're with right, someone right. that doesn't trigger you. It does nothing for your your growth. You've got those wounds and insecurities are still inside you. And they're going to be mm. inside. You. And the reality is that they're not going to stay dormant, right? They find ways to come out, whether it's in, yeah. you know, relationship problems or health problems, as you you know mentioned before, right? It's yeah. going to come yeah. out. You're going to find a pressure relief valve in a way that might not be the most pleasant if we just continue to ignore it and suppress it. And so right. when we get into a relationship, it allows all that to be brought to the surface, you know, oftentimes in a way that's unpleasant, sure, but it's necessary. It's going to come yeah. out regardless. You might as well face it instead of keep running away from it and, and make it about, oh, it's this person or that person or this thing or this event, right? And the biggest thing too is one layer to this is it's an emotional process. It's not just intellectual. The intellectual part is maybe like 10 to 15%, the understanding, the seeing the patterns, so on and so forth. But to actually process that trauma and pain that comes out in these triggers emotionally, to learn how to feel it and process mm. it in a felt sense somatically in the body and doing like inner child, we're connecting to that inner child that's being activated because if we're in reaction and in a triggered state towards whoever that's coming from that, whoever is ca causing that trigger, we are reacting to our past. It's literally the yeah. little yeah. child inside that's coming out and doing his coping patterns because it's feeling scared or hurt or unloved, right? Mm. And so connecting yeah. to that is, is key. And then and we'll, one more thing I'll add is um, it really all comes down to building a stronger relationship with yourself, with these uncomfortable yeah. emotions, with yourself and strengthening it. And as a byproduct of doing so, as you improve that relationship with yourself, your relationship with others starts to improve, right? Or just your yeah. relationship with everything around you, your entire environment starts to change and shift as you shift inside first. Mm. Mm. So good. Uh, I just want to, you know, sort of end with the following. If we could sort of give a few little um, uh, point, point the anxious and the avoidant with a few tips in terms of how to seek their healing. And then in general, you know, what are the some resources that are out there, including coaching with you? But like, say, for example, you know, you're an avoidant. How were you best able to, to, to start to deal with maybe some of the criticism that was coming your way when 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 your partner got triggered? What what is some of the work that you done that that allowed you this healing process and to be a space for her? you know, when she's uh, triggered, what are some of the things that, that, that somebody who's avoided might, might uh, do? Yeah. Well, you know, I'll say this is that it's an ongoing process, right? It's a gradual yeah. process. I, I don't think that we ever get to a point where we just don't feel triggered. I think it can reduce in intensity and in frequency. Yeah. And that's what, yeah. the, that's what we can appreciate, right? That kind yeah. of progress. But as far as like, you know, what do you do? Let's say you are the avoidant is actually lean into the opposite direction of what the avoidance decides yeah. you want to do, right? They're triggered and they're starting to project. Instead of going to shut down and pull away, it's to actually lean into it deeper. Again, easier said than done. It takes a lot of practice. <laughs> but lean into it. Allow yourself to feel, or even allow yourself to feel your own stuff. If you're triggered, yeah. right? If you're feeling hurt, allow yourself to feel it and be present with that. Like, oh, I'm feeling hurt right now. And I can feel hurt feelings as well. Because the more you're able to feel your stuff, mm -hmm. the more you'll be able to feel the other person as well. Again, takes practice and and even acknowledge too if it's too much if it's too much just like let let each other know like look i am triggered i'm not feeling good i'm feeling hurt i can see that i acknowledge and see that you're going through stuff and feeling hurt by something that i might have done i need to take a break and maybe come back to this let me take five to ten minutes do some internal processing dial it down a bit and then come back and, and see if we can really connect yeah. right and, 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 and talking about, right, as opposed to avoid it might just like shut down and pull away without really communicating. Yeah. It's scared mm -hmm. to express itself is to say that, like, look, I am triggered. Acknowledge it and say it out loud. I'm hurting. You're hurting. Let's just take a break. Voicing that out is really important for an avoidant mm -hmm. as opposed to get quiet and shut down or project and run away, whatever that is. And in that five to 10 minutes, it's going to look like a lot of emotional processing, allowing yourself to tune into how it feels, not get too intellectual. 
oh, I feel criticized. I feel unworthy. I feel controlled. I just feel put down. Oh, I feel that in the, in the solar plexus. I don't feel good, right? Let me feel that. Let me lean yeah. into that pain. Let me breathe into and stay open as it comes up. And maybe mm-hmm. it gets to the point where you even have to cry a little bit, you know? That's where you get really vulnerable into it. But that might be a stretch. But, if, you know, whatever comes up, allow yourself to open up to those emotions. Let that energy be, like, felt. Mm-hmm. And then you can do some inner child work and connect to, you know, the little child inside. Like, for me, it's a little Brian. Oh, I see that you're, you're feeling unheard, unsafe. You're feeling a little bit, you know, put down. You're just hurting right now. You're scared and hurting. I feel you. I see you. I'm here for you. It's going to be okay. Mm. You just give it that. You give him yourself that presence and love that you needed as a child. What does every child want when it's feeling activated? To just feel seen, to feel heard, that someone is just there for them. To say, hey, you're still loved. You're still enough. You're going to be okay. I got you. That's the that's pretty much it, right? Yeah. Give that to yourself in the heat of the moment as much as you as much as you can. Again, it takes practice, easier said than done, but it's all practice. Yeah. Um, and there's other modalities too, like breath work. I think breath work yeah. is really powerful. Mm-hmm. Outside of plant medicine, I found yep. breath work to be the hardest hitting, like bring stuff up, process and release kind of kind of modalities out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah breath work, you can do it by yourself or go to a class, work with somebody. Yep. Very important. Right. Yep. Yep. And then for the for the anxious mm. uh, person, really does sound like a lot of that work is very similar in mm. terms of giving the love to yourself. You know, when you feel those triggers. Yeah, and it's gonna be you got you know both people are working against their own instincts, right? So for the avoidant, yeah. it's to actually communicate, express, go towards conflict, and say, and if and if it's too much, then express that it's too much and take a break. Mm-hmm. Or the anxious is gonna be like giving the avoidant the space right they don't want to give them the space mm. hey you need five or even initially like i'm feeling hurt uh, I, I can see maybe you're shutting down or something i'm not feeling good do you need five or ten minutes because then maybe mm. i need right. like, to actually give space mm. easier said than done because everything inside you yeah. is going to be cr- you know crying out for give me soothing right now because i can't handle it right mm. um, so you're going to want work against that to actually give space and then there's going to be a similar, which is the inner child work, the breathing, the somatic awareness, and so on. And oh, yeah. Know. I agree. Breath work is probably one of the best things. And, you know, for anyone who, who who's new to all this, that might be a great starter rather than just jumping <laughs> in with ayahuasca and plant yeah. medicine. Yeah. Great starter. Well, Agreed. Uh, this, this has been a truly awesome conversation, Brian. Uh, you, you can really see how the work in relationships and the work in the spiritual process and awakening process. This is why relationships and spirit are in my book, Thrive State, uh, because you have to do this work to really tap into your own original love vibration. Now, what, of all the work that you've done thus far, plant medicine, breath work, etc., what has been your best medicine? Oh, my best medicine, uh, my wife, actually. Mm. You know, I mean, all the things support it, but she's the ultimate mirror. I'm, conf- I'm confronted with all of my blind spots and my unresolved stuff, you know, <laughs> the strongest through that. Because, like, you could do breath work. You could do plant medicines, right? And the whole point of it is to, like, connect to those emotions, bring it up, process. But, you know, your, your greatest gift is your greatest adversary. I don't want to say my wife is the adversary, but it's the person that's going to, like, <laughs> trigger you the most is what I'm trying to say, right? Right. And And... You know, I would not be where I'm at today. I would not be spiritual. I would not have been as deep into this personal development. I would not be, you know, who I am is much more evolved and, and continuing to evolve being if it wasn't for the relationship that I have with my wife. And it was, and it's, and it's, and it was extremely challenging and completely the opposite of what you would say as a healthy, you know, um, harmonious relationship that everyone craves. It was the opposite of that. It was completely, you know, extremely um roller coaster up and down intense fighting every therapist was pretty much hinting that we should break up that kind of thing mm. but through that was the most profound transformation and growth and, and and more love opening up inside me as a result of that now granted i'll say i'll finish with these things is that for a relationship to succeed of course there's gotta be love like okay, some kind of energetic connection that goes beyond the rational stuff of course that's gotta be there right that's obvious and two is growth. Guy value growth. Now you got you guys might grow at different rates, or one person might take the lead 
mm -hmm. at first and then potentially inspire the other, right? It's not, it doesn't have to be the same pace in the same way, but both have to value looking at themselves at some point, right? Get on page with that. It's really hard, you know, this game, ultimately. The hardest game you can play, I think. And mm -hmm. uh, if you got those two things, you can surpass any challenges and, you know, it'd be incredible growth as a result of it. Wow, what what an awesome story! I, I I say right now, and I didn't see this before. Was you know, my partner Tiffany is my emotional and spiritual gym, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a, a sparring partner, so to speak. Dude, such awesome work here. How do people find out more about you and the work that you do uh, for others? The best is to follow my social media. So that's Awakening with Brian, and that's Brian with an I on Instagram. Awakening with Brian on Instagram on TikTok. Also on YouTube, but may, I'm mostly on Instagram, TikTok, right? Um, and also my website is awakeningwithbrian.com. You can also check that out. That's the best way. But I, consuming my social media content will give you a much better feel for like my messages and my energy. Ooh, beautiful. Brian, thank you so much for, for spending the time with us. And thank you for being on the Thrive State Podcast. You bet. It was awesome. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Thrive State Podcast. And if this podcast is bringing a lot of value to you, if you find that your life is just improving with this podcast, that your life is getting to the next level, please consider supporting it. And here's a few ways you can do so. You can do so by liking this video and commenting on this video and also sharing this video with your friends and family. Another thing you can do is go to ratethispodcast.com slash ThriveState. Go ahead and leave us a five-star review there. It will really, really help this show grow. And it, this will give me more time so that I could actually give more content to you just like you got in this episode. And if you haven't already picked up a copy of my book, Thrive State, your blueprint for optimal health, longevity, and peak performance. You can pick it up now. It became a number one new release in longevity. Go to thrivestatebook.com. And if you enjoy the book, please consider leaving us a review as well. And the last thing you can do if you're liking everything here and you want to work uh, more closely with me as well as my team to get you into the Thrive State, Go to kianvu.com slash accelerator and consider joining the home course, the Thrive State Accelerator. It's really the course that I use. It's the concepts that I use personally when I work with CEOs, celebrities, and my high profile clients to get them to the Thrive State. Again, the Thrive State Accelerator at kianvu.com slash accelerator. And because you're a listener of this podcast, I want you to save 25% by using the coupon code PODCAST25. I hope we continue to give value to you. And remember always, you are your best medicine.